Yo, 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 welcome to my hike. I tell you what, I've been walking this trail so much, I know exactly where I'm going. I don't even need to see where I'm going. That's why I'm just walking, you know, without even looking. And that's the beauty of what I do, because that's how good I am. That's what I do. And it's good, it's fun. All right, enough of that. <laughs> Come on, are you ready to take a hike? Sometimes when people don't want you hanging around, they say, hey, why don't you go take a hike? Like it's a derogatory thing. You know, I, I wouldn't mind taking a hike. Okay, yeah, I'll take a hike. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. Or they'll, take one, they'll say, why don't you take a long walk off a short pier? Yes, thank you, I like to swim as well. I will do that as well. All right, well, why don't you guys go take a hike with me? Let's go. To say I was thrilled to be hiking with my next guest would be an understatement. Um, never do I laugh as hard as I do when I'm with him in a room one-on-one. -on -one. So funny. Um, he's responsible for me getting an audition on Saturday Night Live uh, with Lauren Michaels. He is Hans from Hans and Franz. That's right. And don't think he doesn't know how to hike because he is the perfect hiker. That's right. He's a great mimic, a great impressionist. Uh, characters galore. Had so much fun working with him on Saturday Night Live. And hear me now and believe me later. It is now time to go hiking with Mr. Dana Kavi. Dana, tell me about the uh, contraption you're wearing. You, it looks like you're like a beekeeper almost. I know, it's amazing. <laughs> I just got this one. Well, I'm Irish Norwegian, so I don't really tan anymore. I just get red. <laughs> and I don't like to spend hours slathering suntan lotion on myself. Yeah. So I decide, wait a minute, what if I got a giant hat that covered everything from the sun and yeah. skipped the sunscreen? Yeah. And so that's what I did. From knowing you over the years, yeah. you always downplay everything. Right. And have no expectations because right. I guess you don't want to be let down. Well, I just learned that from stand-up because every time someone came off and I was up next and they go and they'd say, oh, you're going to kill. I would not kill. <laughs> so then I said, don't, that's the jinx, right? You don't do that, right? Yeah. You, you always say, well, we'll see what happens. You don't go, audience is great. You're going to destroy. And then you never destroy. So, <laughs> so um, you, you hate to be let down. So you never build anything up that much. Well, I think that living at a, at a one, say one to 10 is miserable to joyous. So I think generally, if you could live mostly around a seven, but you can't sustain a 10, you know? Um, yeah. I compartmentalize my 10s, you know? Right. But as far as sustaining that, you know, if you want to have street cred as a comedian, you're supposed to be kind of depressed, you know? Yeah. Or really disappointed in the world. I always find it funny, guys who are sad and depressed and they're millionaires now. And, or, or angry comedians who yeah. are now incredibly successful, you know, wow. and they have to find something. I can't find my fucking luggage, you know? <laughs> like, do you have a lot of negative thoughts? Do you think you're a negative person in general? Do you fight that? Um, I have, um, I've noticed certain traits that kind of I have to, uh, you know, address. Yeah, Exercise on, yeah. is good. Being creative is good. I play the guitar, the piano, I paint now, you know. Oh, like, you paint? I do, yeah. Like, what do you paint? Oh, hard to describe. I'm using, uh... You take lessons? No. So it's not really good painting? <laughs> <laughs> My mantra is, you know, life is hard, but... Try to do one thing fun every day if you can, mm -hmm. or something you enjoy every single day. And then, you know, the reminding lesson of life is always being grateful. Wow, Dana, we've been, we just started this hike, and yeah. this is a hill we're starting on. A little hill. And it's, you're like, no, not on a breath at all. Uh, you, yes. And I'm, I'm, I hike a lot. I'm, I'm a runner hiking. by trade. Now I'm hiking. You're in great shape, too. Resting pulse about 45. You had a, uh, as everybody knows, some kind of a heart thing a well, while back. Yeah, an artery thing. An artery thing, not a heart thing at all. Not a heart thing, v big difference, but I understand why, yeah. you know. Whenever I talk about it, usually people are curious 
or they'll get real quiet and look off. Let's try it with you. Okay. I'll start talking about it and we'll see if you get quiet and look off or whether okay. you get curious. Hey man, how's your heart? Well, the heart was always fine. I did not have a heart attack. <laughs> I had an artery that was blocked and once it was open, I was... <laughs> Occasionally people will say, hey, how's Dana? You know, how's right. the heart thing? And I say, oh, he's, yeah. he's perfect. He's in great shape. He yeah. runs every day. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So once Run, you, hike. Yeah. once that's out there, it's like I got a bad eight by 10. Right. Picture I can't get rid of. It's everywhere. Yes. Yeah. It's like a cockroach. I can't get rid of it. Yeah. So it's the same with like your heart. Once uh, rumors thing. start, then they just keep going. How do we know that you're not just trying to cover up something? If I asked you to go run up this hill, would you be able to do it? Yeah. And I don't want to put you on the spot. I don't want you to die on me. Don't die. Don't die, Dana. Come on. Come on. Be careful. Okay, I believe it, Dana. Okay, that's good. Okay, okay, that's good, Dana. Okay, <laughs> okay Dana, we believe that's good. You don't like to fly. I know, I don't. I don't. I mean, we toured together. Yeah. Back in the 80s, and I remember you yeah. were a mess. Yeah. You had to have at least a couple of beers. When I was at my peak fear, if I was doing a corporate date and they were sending a jet, I'd have a bucket of ice with 10 Heinekens in it, and it would be <laughs> between my feet. <laughs> And I always did, the, to relax me, I'd crack a Heineken and put it to my mouth as we're going down the runway. And as the plane went up, that would, the gravity would force the golden <laughs> liquid into me. But now you live in Hollywood. Yep. And you're probably getting invited a lot to yes. cocktail parties or you yeah. know, events. Yeah. yeah. But you're not really, socially, you don't like to be involved in those kinds of things, right? Yeah, I, don't right go, I don't go out much. Yeah, I don't is, go anywhere. Is yeah. it because you don't like the small talk? Yes. The small talk. I like, like if there was a couple, or maybe at the most two couples. So six people at a dinner party or a restaurant where the one conversation can happen. Yeah. But once it gets bigger, I find it tedious and laborious. What's up? How you doing? Good, good, good. Especially if you're not in Hollywood. Then you got all people going, what do you got coming up? What's next? Yeah, what's next? Well, oh, that they, even happens in Hollywood. Well, they stopped doing it for me because of my age. But in my 40s and 50s, they <laughs> Death say, is coming up next. That's what's coming up. Death. Well, my 40s and 50s, they go, got any new projects? <laughs> But in the last few years, all I hear is like, quite an honor to meet you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you got any uh, life term apology? Yeah. <laughs> but I remember when I met Kirk Douglas, super movie star, look him up, kids. And he was 69 at the time. And I go, well, you're a legend. He goes, don't say I'm a legend. It sounds like I'm about to die. <laughs> and that's the way he talked. And he's still alive. He's still alive. He's 101, is he? Or 100? 101, he doesn't even know. Oh, man. He's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you work with some big, you work with Burt Lancaster. And Kirk, Kirk Douglas. Douglas. I did their last movie right and, before SNL. And who's that, who's that guy I'm trying to remember? Mickey, Mickey Rooney. Mickey Rooney. I was the number one star in the world. You hear me? Bang. The world. And he would say that every day, hundreds of times. In the world. Number one star in the world. He goes, uh, Judy Garland never owned a car. He was like Trump with the non sequiturs. Yeah. What do you mean, Mick? She never owned a car because they pumped her so full of drugs they killed her. He never would take a breath. He would yeah. go right to the end. But he was, he had a 38 revolver. He'd wave it around. So who was Mickey Rooney dating for a long time? Everybody. Every, he was a ladies' man. Ava Gardner. Everybody. I go, what was Ava Gardner like in bed? He just stared off and said, you'll never know. <laughs> but yeah, he bedded every starlet of the Mickey day. Mickey Rooney. And he's what? 4'8"? Uh, literally. You know what he said to me? Though? I'll never forget it. I go, Mickey, how'd you get all those stars, all those beautiful women? He goes, money makes you handsomer. <laughs> he, he must have had a lot of money. He was making 200000 a year in 1937 as a teenager. And back then, that was like 250000 a year. <laughs> well, probably like $12.5 million or $20 million. Yeah. You know, something crazy. And then he was dead broke. I called up the head of Warner Brothers in 1955. I said, this is Mickey Rooney, I need a job. He hung up on me. And then he would stare off into space. Before you got married, Dana, mm -hmm. were you, do you think you were a ladies' man? <laughs> what was your, what's your biggest fear? I will yeah. tell you what you told me once was your biggest fear. Okay. <laughs> you said to be famous and broke. Well, back then before I had kids, yeah. yeah. I, so maybe at this rock here we just turn around? No, we keep going. <laughs> <laughs>
You've been a huge fan of Neil Young's for years. And you, the yes. great thing about SNL is you get to know, meet your idols right. on there. Like you and James Taylor. Me and James Taylor, you and Neil Young. And you, yeah. to this day, you're still friends with them, I'm sure. Well, I wish I'd hung out with him more. I think I was too intimidated. But we're at the party. The and after party? He, yeah, and he's having a glass of wine, whatever. And then he just spontaneously looks up, sees Chris Farley and says, quote, that fat kid's funnier than shit. <laughs> <laughs> in all your years in this business, who were you the most excited and intimidated to meet? Hmm, that's a good one. Because <laughs> I know we're both be Be uh, Beatle fans. Well, I, oh yeah, well that would be the number one, Paul McCartney, uh, Paul without McCartney. a doubt. And, and um, bizarrely, as I've said <laughs> on occasion, I met Paul before I was on Saturday Night Live. I was hired, but I was just at Lauren Michaels' house. Yeah. And so that was completely over the top crazy. And this is not a joke, but I, you know, Paul's coming over, and then I called friends. I was going to meet him. Yeah. There was nobody there. It was just me, Whitney Brown, and Lauren. Doorbell rang. I answered it, and Paul McCartney, I was so nervous. He, he said, quote, your face, it's going a bit funny. <laughs> so he noticed. He knew. He's seen that face a lot. <laughs> what, would he, what would he sound like if he was on this hike with us? Well, you know, I'm a bit winded, you know. <laughs> I keep going again. You know, I had me wind when I was a schoolboy. Right. In Liverpool, I had wind, you know. I was, I was a schoolboy. I could run, you know, like a bandit, you know. And as I've gotten older, a couple of blunts, a couple of gooey siggies, you know, me wind isn't what it used to be. Me don't know what to do. I don't know why I say me before I talk about me, but me don't know. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think is the healthiest candy bar? A Snickers bar, because you have the chocolate that can spike your blood sugar, but you have the peanuts, the protein, that will calm it down. You know, there's so many peanuts in the Snickers <laughs> ball. You know, I mean, it's packed with peanuts. When you go out to eat, Dana, with other people, do you feel inclined to always pick up the check? Yes. Me too. Yeah, it's amazing how much I pick it up. <laughs> Why is that? Is that uh, like a guilt thing? You feel like you're making too much money? Yeah. Well, I look around the table. I mean, I had dinner with uh, five comedians and Judd Apatow. Yeah. And I noticed it was automatic because everyone goes on Celebrity Net Worth. Before they come to dinner. Yeah, or even with their phone at the thing, and the guy who has the highest uh, net worth usually picks it up. But I did offer to pay and, and said thank you. But it was like, I looked at Judd's uh, net worth and I thought, yeah, yeah, he should pay. He should yeah, pay. he's gonna yeah. pay big. One time I had lunch with uh, Ray Romano. Okay. Larry David. Okay. And myself. <laughs> and the check came. And you got it? And no, oh. I was about to. But we did the credit card uh, thing. Oh, Whoever yeah. had the best poker hand with the credit card numbers. Oh. I think Larry David had to pay. <laughs> well, when you're out with Sandler, you know, because you know he's he's usually got people doing it, but so you can't. The check doesn't come. It's just like yeah, yeah I get all, all kind of, and it's, it's all <laughs> there. Do you think the net worth thing on the internet is accurate? No, I think sometimes it's pretty accurate. I think a lot of it is just guesswork. I, 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 you know, because I know of someone who they're off by 60 million. Wow. Because they own a lot Is that of mine. That's yours. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to tipping, mm -hmm. um, yes. Because you're recognizable, you feel like you have to tip more because you don't want them talking about you. I tip 50%. 50? Yeah. 5 0. 5 0. So your net worth is going down rapidly. <laughs> I just, I'm not, if I guess it's if like I went out to a 12 star restaurant every night, I might have, but I tip 50%. What happened was, well, one is I was a waiter and a busboy. Yeah. So I know that's how. And two is, um, it's kind of like I added it up all throughout the year and I can take the hit. And sometimes that goofy thing, you can ride it off. Right. Oh, so, th there was also yeah. that time in New York you told me about. Well, I was in a building. I didn't know how buildings were. A doorman were. building. Yeah. And we left. SNL broke and Paul and I left, but we didn't leave um, a tip for the doorman and everybody. Because like around the holidays, you're yeah, and, we, to leave a and tip. I'd never lived in a building like that with the doorman and that with facility. Me. Same. So we left and we came back. Page six had a you know. Oh, tight, the New York Post. New York Post, page six. <laughs> the gossip Dan, page. Dana Carvey tight ass. So then I was. <laughs> 50, but you always wanted a tight ass, didn't you? Right. I know. I didn't know how they knew. I was. I was, I was a squatty little bugger. But we were working on Hans and Franz. Yeah. We'd have an idea. And then we would sort of just start talking in that accent for hours and make notes or sometimes record it. Yeah. And we would get silly just... I've never laughed harder 
while we, writing a, a, a sketch. Yeah, then and, with Hans Hans. Right, we would riff for hours, and you little girl, and then yeah, yeah and you're that's right. I'm in the bun. Yeah, if you think you're so fabulous, then why don't you? you know. Yeah, your bottom's like a rock. Yeah. Except it's not hard like a rock, you know, just bad comedy. It's more like a pebble. Yeah, it's like a little pebble, run away, pebble man. So we, that's the kind of stuff that a, maybe a podcast would allow me to do. But it's stand up, which I do really enjoy. Depending on the room, every room has its own personality, right? Yeah. You don't want a third balcony because when you have a third balcony, the top balcony is watching the second balcony watch the show. You know, people, the, if there's a chip on my shoulder about what I do, they go, well, he just is, he just silly. Yeah. But you know, it is silly. A lot of stuff you do is silly. But you can't just be silly and, and go do an hour of silly. Then it sounds like it's kind of easy. That's the name of your next special. An hour of silly. An hour of silly. <laughs> just be. Just all you gotta do is be silly. Um, but I like the rhythms. Like my new favorite toy is Melania, the, what she calls Donald Trump. Melania, you should come to the White House. I don't know, Mr. Donald President, Parson, Parson. So that's silly. Or you could call it abstract, like. Monty Python, we are the knights who say, neat. Yeah. Is, is Monty Python just silly? Of course it's silly. Yeah. The but silly it, walk. Right, but it's it gets in, it's something crunchy about it. I mean, there's other, there's- Well, it's British, so it gives it a little air of well, sophistication. Well, Benny, Benny Hill- silly sophistication. Benny Hill is silly. Yeah, there's yeah. other kinds of Benny silly. Hill is silly, right? There. Yeah. But the rhythms of some of the Eric Idle and John Cleese rhythms are, uh, artistry all in their own. They're like musical songs, like the way John Cleese would say, well, you bastards. He's only saying you bad. It's like Steve Martin. Steve. Hey, you know Steve. But Steve yeah. Martin's stand-up, if you looked at a, a script of it, there's nothing really funny there. I remember seeing him, it was just so profound for me at the boarding house, where he just goes, I want a blue spot. Yeah. And then he goes on that long thing, and it's just brilliant. But if you looked at it at a script, it would be nothing. You would be, oh right. man, Steve's not, it's not gonna happen for Steve tonight. <laughs> it was all in his oh, yeah, attitude. All attitude. All attitude, rhythm, is acting. Yeah. Uh, you know, so. yeah. What are you working on now in your act? Well, tomorrow night I'm doing a little drop in, so I'm gonna go up as a French guy and then do impressions of American comedians. <laughs> so I might do that. That's oh, good. I could do you too. Et j'ai été changé Kevin Nidon. Thanks, Dana Carvey. Man, wasn't that special? And by the way, you did not have to tip me for this hike. I mean, that was totally unexpected, but greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you guys for joining my hike. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, and we'll catch you the next time. Happy trails. Don't say I'm a legend. It sounds like I'm about to die. <laughs> <laughs>